Hi everyone and welcome to this chapter of Dark Crash Course. In this chapter we're going to talk about asynchronous programming and I know a lot of you have been waiting for this chapter but I've intentionally kept it until this point to talk about asynchronous programming simply because talking about this topic requires us knowing about a lot of a lot of other topics and we can't just jump into it from the first chapter so i'm uh, grateful for you uh, for being so patient uh, until we get to this chapter i know for instance the mixing chapter was an important chapter for you as well but the more advanced we get we have to pretty much wait until almost the end of uh, the course to talk about these topics in this chapter we're going to talk about mainly futures and streams and I know for sure that this topic is a little bit scary to some developers, especially if you're a little bit more beginner, maybe to Dart. Uh, but I'm going to try to break uh, streams and future, actually futures first and then streams down as much as I can. Um, but there is also a limit to how much we can break things down. Otherwise, this video could go to maybe four or five hours long. Um, but I really do my best to break it down as much as possible. So we go into details about how futures and streams work in Dart. Let's get started. I'm going to bring up a, a terminal window in here and let's go in here and say that we have a new application. Let's say Dart uh, creates with a template of a console and we say asynchronous, async, how should, what should we call it? Let's, let's go asynchronous programming something like this I wonder if I wrote it correctly async run uh, yeah it's a long word okay and let's uh, go into their async with Visual Studio code I'm gonna get rid of the terminal window here and let's go to the workspace JSON zoom level of six we usually do and let's get rid of the first uh, Dart file in there and create example one, example one Dart main function. Of course, we're going to get rid of the Explorer in terminal FS watch. And we're going to say example one. There's a little bit of configuration always in the beginning of chapters and it, it, it is a little bit tiring, but <laughs> what can we do? This is just something we have to do to set up our project. So let's get rid of that JSON file and we can then get started. So Let's talk about futures. So what are futures? Futures are pieces of functionality that will complete their work in the future, as their name indicates. A usual function that you call, you take some input, pass to the function, and ask the function to do some work. And then when the function is done, you get the result back. So let's say that I say um, string get name. So this is a simple function, and it says foobar. And in here I say final name one is get name and then name two is get name and then print name one and print name two. So uh, what's happening in here is at line number two, the program will stop execution of this, uh, the main function. And it will literally jump from here, line number two to this function. And it says, ah, this function is returning the value of foobar, then takes that value of foobar and brings it here and literally says name one is foobar then it will continue to line number three. So that's a very huge distinction between how normal functions work and how futures work. So remember, normal functions, when you call them, the application stops executing the caller function. In this case, the function that's calling the get name function is main function. So execution will literally stop in that function until get name returns. Okay, so then you can go to line number three. And again, it will jump here return a value and then it will continue after that okay however if you call a function that returns a future the execution of the caller function will just continue it doesn't really care when that future ends unless you ask you ask the application to wait for the results okay and that's done usually using the await syntax we're going to have a look at that now so let's remove these from here and let's create a function that returns a future of string instead of a string and we say get username okay and here then we have different ways of calculating this future so one way i'm going to show you a lot of ways actually one way to do that, and I'm going to show you a lot of ways actually to create uh, functions that return a future in this example, but one way is to mark the function as async. Once you do that, then you can literally turn this into a normal function. So you can see in here, we're literally saying return John Doe. You see, this is just like if you had a simple string uh, function like this. 
except for the future and the async part. Okay. And if you remove this async, then you can't do this anymore. So if you want to return a value, just like you would in a normal function, uh, just turn your function into an async. And then you can do some calculation in here and then return a value. But usually that's not how we do things. I'm just showing you that if you have async uh, like this in your function, then you can return a value. Okay. And to be honest with you, this is a completely normal syntax. And in here, you can actually do some asynchronous work as well that will complete in the future. And then you return a value dependent on those values that have been calculated in the future as well. So, but just know that if you have async like this, uh, appended to your function signature, then you can literally return a value like this. Okay. There we go. That's one example. So then in the function that calls this, uh, sorry, in the function that wants to consume this function, which returns a future, then we can go and say print and we say get username. And you can see this is not really going to work as we want because the return value is going to be an instance of future. So whenever you get an instance of a future, you just know that it's not consumed yet. So you need to consume it in order to actually get its value. But how do you consume it? One way to consume a future is by saying await. Okay. And await what it does, it calls this function and awaits and actually waits for the result to come back. And then it will give you that string, which is inside the future. So await dissolves and resolves this future pretty much. However, in order to use await, then you need to have an async function as well. So like this. All right. So if your main function that is using the await keyword inside itself doesn't have the async keyword here, then it can't use the await keyword inside it. All right. So that's one way to consume a future. And you can see the result printed right here. Okay. Let's create another async function. And we're going to call it, uh, say, future. It returns a string as well. We're going to say get address like this. And then in here, then we were not going to use async, but instead we're actually going to compute a future. So let's say we just want a future, a string that simply returns a value just like we did in here. However, we're not going to use async. Okay. So let's say we return a future value, as you can see in here, future value. And then you say one, two, three, uh, main street, for instance, and now that we have this function, we can go and consume it. So let's see if GitHub Copilot can help. And there we go. We get address one, two, three main street. Okay. So this is another way of creating a future and this future. I mean, both of these functions, though, they're saying that they create a future, but they're simply calculating a string, for instance, in here and returning it immediately. So there's really no waiting involved in here. So there's really no heavy computation happening. Okay. So let's create another function. And we're going to say this time we want a future of string that gets a phone number, but we want to do it. And we want to actually do the calculation in one second. So this is one of the points of having a future in that you can do something in the future. Okay. So let's say future string and we say get phone number. Okay. And we say, this is a function that returns a future with a delay. And we say delayed like this, I'm going to bring it to the next line. And for the duration, we, we create, we say const duration uh, seconds one. Okay. So in one second, and then we say the computation happens in here inside this function. And we just return a dummy phone number just like that. Boom. Let's see. Uh, oh, the list of parameters. We forgot about that. There we go. Okay. So this is another way of creating a future. You say future and you want to delay it by a second. And then after that second elapses, you get this function callback. And then whatever you return from here will be returned from your future. So you could actually mark this as future string. Okay. For just to be more explicit what this actually does, because if you say future string in here and then go and return a number, then you will get an error. Okay. It says int isn't really a string. Okay. So, uh, that's an example. And we can go ahead then and print this result. Just we printed the result of these two other functions and you can see the result printed in the, in the console or in our terminal. Okay. Another way of creating a future would be to say future of string, for instance, and we say get city city like this. And then we say it's an async function. And in here you can actually delay the return of your value by using future again. So let's say we say New York, Okay. But before this, we want to wait a second. How do we wait a second in this function? Well, let's say that you have a future that is delayed and we say const duration seconds one. Okay. So you have a function, uh, sorry, you have a future in here that doesn't produce any values at all. So let's say if you say final blah, it will be a future of dynamic because in this function, 
like we actually didn't pass this uh, function in here. So it's literally a future that doesn't produce any values. Okay. How do you wait for it though? Because this, this guy wants to wait a second, right? But if you go in here, if we go and say print get city in here, you will see the result will be printed. Uh, there we go. It's, I mean, we had to wait a little bit because get phone number was delaying things. So if I comment out get phone number, you can see get city prints out its result immediately. But why? Because we had a future delayed in here by one second. But the thing is, we have a future in here, but no one's waiting for it. And that's the point of futures. It's just an instance of a class. Future is a class. Okay. However, in order to actually kick it, like kick started to say that I want to wait for this future to do its work, then you have to say await. Okay. So remember that you have to await for futures to get their values. Okay. Or actually, I would say you have to await for futures to kick start them. Okay, not just to get their values, because if you have a chain of futures, you can still use like the then function on them, as we'll soon see, and get the value of the previous future and chain it to the next future. So to get the values, you don't necessarily have to say await, but to kick start a future and grab the final value of that future, you have to use await. Okay, good. This was another example. So then let's go and create another function. And this this time around, it's going to be a simple function of future. And we say get country. And this is another way of creating an async function. You can literally say it resolves to a value. And that, that is simply possible because we have async in here, right? Because if you remove this, you can't return this. You have to say future dot value like this. But if you want to simply return a value as a future, then you can mark it as async and then return your raw value, as you can see in here. Okay. And the last example I want to show you is uh, simply using um, future delayed and async. So let's say future string. And then we say get zip code. I know a lot of countries don't have zip code. And it is postal code, for instance, in the UK and postcode here in Sweden. But zip codes used in the US. So let's just go with that. And in here, what you can do is to have a future and you say delayed. All right, as we did before, let's create our duration. So we say duration seconds one. And then in here, we just say a function that returns one, two, three, four, five. OK, so this is one way of creating that. But we've already seen this example. But I just want to show you that you can also mark this as async if you want to. So a function that returns a future and eh, like this, it can also be marked as async. But this really doesn't do anything. Okay, because in this async is literally placed in here so that you can either return a raw value of this type, which is string, or that within this function right here, you can use the await keyword, but we're not doing either. So this async isn't really contributing to anything. So you can literally comment it out and your function will still compile. All right. So I'm just going to leave it like this with the commented out code, or actually let's just remove it. And let's just put a comment in here, say async keyword doesn't really contribute with anything here. Okay. And then let's go and consume these. So after get city, we have get country and get zip code. So get country and get zip code. And let's put the results in here. And then you can see all of them are printing out the results. Okay. So consume and get the latest value or the last value of a future or a future chain using the wait keyword. Okay, good. Done with example one. Let's create example two, uh, example two dart. And we need to fix our FS watch as well to watch example two in here or execute at least example two upon changes in this directory. Good. Um, now what we're going to talk about is future error handling. All right, let's let's demonstrate that. So what happens if a future actually errors out? How do we handle that? Let's say we have a function that returns a future of string. Actually, you know what? I'm going to copy paste that simply because this part is something that we've already done in the previous example. So you can see here we have a class and it implements exception. It's called first or last name missing. All right. And there is a se separate chapter that I've created in the Dart crash course for exceptions and error handling. So you can watch that. And this won't be any surprise for you that we can create custom exception classes. 
Then we have a future of string function that is called get full name. And you can see it has two required name uh, parameters, first name and last name. And if any of them is empty, then we throw an exception. You see, we're in a function that creates a future, but we can throw an exception right there. And when you throw an exception, this future will error out so that your error will be embedded inside this future. So the future class can either uh, carry with it a value or an exception. And in this case, we're saying that it's a future that either carries with it a string or an exception. If first name and last name are empty or one of them is empty, we throw an exception. Otherwise, we just say return a future dot value. And you could change this to an async function and literally in here just return this raw string. So uh, that's also possible. It's up to you. OK, now that we have this, how do we handle errors? So let's say that we turn this function into an async function so that we can await on the result of this function. So we say get full name. And for the first name, we say John. And for last name, we say Doe. All right. Actually, it's a name parameter. So let's say name, last name. And we can await on it. And then we print it. All right. Like this, like this, like this. And then we will copy this code and then do another execution of it. And this time around for first name, we just return, sorry, we just pass an empty string. So let's run our application. You can see in the first instance, we get John Doe, but in the second instance or the second execution in here, since we're passing first name as an empty string, then we're getting an unhandled exception in here. And it says instance of first or last name missing exception. All right, so now our FS watch is kind of broken. We have to run FS watch again to get it to work. Okay, there we go. So how do we handle errors uh, or sorry, exceptions? And you can see in here sim simply because we're using await, what happens is the code hits line number three and it says, oh, I have to await for the result of this function. Then it stops the execution of this main function right here at line number three goes into this function, gets the future, awaits for the result or waits for the result. Then it says John Doe. OK, I'm going to put John Doe in here. It says, OK, I will print John Doe and then it will continue. So await has that effect on your code that it, it basically stops the execution of the program or the calling function, at least at that point in time. All right. It goes here and says, OK, this guy is going to throw an exception. And then the exception is thro thrown, I think, at, at line number nine or ten, it should be. Let's see. Is it nine or 10 uh, here? It says it is thrown in get full name, but inside main is at line 10. There we go at line 10, right? Good. So we know that that throws an exception, but how do we handle it? Well, you can see it is a simple function that we're calling it here. So you could put it in try and catch. So let's say try like this, and then we say catch or on first so we basically catch our exception, then we take our print statements like this and we put them in try and then we can print, let's say print and we say first or last name is missing. All right. And then we kickstart FS watch again and let's see. And now you can see you get first or last name is missing. So this is a traditional way of catching your exceptions. And it works really well in this particular example because we're awaiting on the results of these functions. OK, so it's kind of like a normal function that you are calling normal function, get the string. And then if it throws an exception, then we catch it. All right. So that was that example. I mean, there are other ways of catching uh, exceptions that are thrown inside uh, futures, and we're going to talk about them soon. So let's go to example three like this and our FS watch as well. Let's fix that up here okay and then i'm gonna put a main function in here and i think we can turn our main function already into an async function because we're going to need that so like this okay and get rid of terminal okay in this example we're going to talk about future chaining and this is something that scares a lot of people but i don't know why um it, it's very easy I'm, but to be honest with you i'm a little bit biased because i've been doing reactive programming for uh, god knows maybe about six years i would say it's been a long time, six, seven years, I would say. And uh, it's been it's been a very, very rewarding journey for me to actually get used to uh, reactive programming. So I'm, I'm quite biased when it comes to it because streams and futures are usually using reactive programming. And I find it very, very easy to work with. But a lot of people have difficulties with it and simply because 
just talking about futures and streams scares a lot of people so that feeling of being scared prevents those people from actually digging into how asynchronous programming works it's not that asynchronous programming is difficult it's just because a lot of people are scared of it and they don't they don't want to get into it so they just think it's easier to hate it than to learn it so uh, i'm here just to tell you that it's very very easy once you get the basics of it uh, nailed down all right and let's go in this example and talk about future chaining the concept of future chaining means that you have a future and it calculates a value and that value is then fed into another uh, future which perhaps consumes that value and produces another future so a future within a future so future chaining is the is the possibility of feeding the value of a future to another future and let the second future complete or continue its work with the value that was fed from the first future and so on and so forth so this future chaining can just include maybe 10 20 futures each of which completes feed this value to the next future and the next future continues and to do its work using the value of the first future or the previous future okay so let's see in here let's say that we have a function and, and this is just for demonstration purposes so we say we have a function that returns an integer and we call it calculate length and it can't, the length of a string simply you can calculate it by returning it but in this function we're just doing it for the purpose of demonstration okay so let's say string and we get a value and in here we just say okay we return a future that is delayed by a second and then the result of this future is the length of that string that we fed it okay then we create another function we say future string and we say get full name like this and we delay this as well let's say delayed uh, like this and we say const duration seconds one uh, like this and the value that we return is John Doe as you can see in here so one function that returns after a second and returns John Doe and a second function that calculates a string and uh, sorry that calculates the length of any string okay so how do we first call this function and then feed its value to this function well there are different ways of doing it let's say that our async uh, sorry our main function is an async function so what you could do is to say okay await we want to await the result of this function calculate length okay so we say calculate length and then in here we want to pass this function to it to this but this function returns a future of string but this function accepts a string so how do we do it well we await the get full name like this okay and we say final length like this and we can print the length so you just await on get full name and the result of that will be passed into calculate length and then after two seconds you get the value of eight so this is one way of doing it however the one that we wanted to demonstrate in this example is to say await and we say get full name okay sorry actually let's not await let's not make things complicated so let's say get full name and we want to pass this get full names result into calculate length and you can do that using the then keyword and this is future chaining so this value will be of any type that this returns so this is the value that actually is coming out of this function okay using the then keyword and i can see then can either return the raw value is this future actually it should say future or there we go so it says in this function you either return another future or you return a raw value so in here you could just say one if you want to and the result of this will be a future of int so a blah and you can see blah is a future of int because here we just returned int but if you say 1.1 it will be a future of double however we're not consuming this value or if you said value since value is a string which is the result of get full name blah will be a future of string but what's important about the then function is that you can return a future from it so in here then we can say okay calculate length and note that i'm not doing a wait okay it's because this future will be returned from then and this whole thing you can await on and we say now we get a future of int and then we say await on it and we say a length and then we can print it to the console okay there we go and we're gonna get the same effect after two seconds the value of eight is printed to the console okay so this is how you do future chaining using the then function and in here since this is a i mean if you don't await on it then you get a future of int and then you can also say then okay and then you can do something with that value or you return a new value or you do another future within that then okay so this is basically the concept of uh, future chaining so let's close example three and let's go to example four
dart in here. Okay. Now in example four, we're going to start talking about streams. And this is, this is where things get scary for some people because streams are like a chain. It's like a chain of events. So whereas I like to actually show these things using comments. So this is a future. It works and then it produces a value and then it stops. Okay. So let's say this is one second, one second. So, uh, the future starts. So this is a future. Okay. It starts, it waits for one second, for instance, and it produces a value uh, and then it stops. However, a stream looks like this. It starts, then it can wait perhaps one second, and then it can produce a value. Let's go here and we say produce a value. Then it can wait another second and produce a value and then can wait another second, produce a value. And then what it can do also is to say, okay, I wait one second and I will produce three values. <laughs> okay. So you get the idea. It's just like a mix and match bag of uh, candies. Whereas a future has a start, a perhaps a delay um, and a value, a stream has a start and a stop at the end. And it has anything in between that is a mix and match of uh, waiting and values, waiting and values. All right. So let's put a main function in here and have a look at how we can demonstrate uh, streams. And let's go to, oops, we got a future int because we didn't await on it in the previous example. So let's go to pre previous example in here and say await. I think we forgot the await keyword in here. Okay. So async, and then we say we're now waiting for example four. Good. So let's create a, some functions that return streams. Okay. So if you create a function that returns a stream, it's kind of like future, but it can produce many values and let's say get numbers. Okay. And now in order to make sure that you can return a stream, I mean, there are different ways of creating streams, just like there are different ways of creating futures. Like if you remember from example one, there are so many different ways of creating functions that return futures. It's the same is true for streams. One way is to mark your function as an async function like this with a star. Okay. So what we could do then is to say, okay, this function is an async function. So internally it can use the, um, it can use the, the, sorry, the await keyword. So let's say for var i, there we go. And you can see we're saying that, okay, go from zero to nine inclusive and increment i. And then every time you do that, wait one second, okay, wait one second, and then use the yield keyword in order to return a value within the stream. So this i value will then be printed, it will, sorry, not printed, it will be injected into the stream. So this stream will look like this, start, uh, one sec delay, delay, and then it will produce the value of zero. And then it will be, uh, and it will then be here, one sec delay, and it will produce a value of one. One sec delay to one sec, uh, uh, until you get to nine. Okay, so this is how this function will look like. All right. So this yield will insert this given value within the stream. And that's how this zero, one, two are being inserted into this returning stream. Okay, I'm going to re remove that comment. Then we'll create another function. And we can in inside this second function, basically throw an exception, just like we throw an exception in futures and see how that looks like. So I'm going to just copy paste the code for that function, because it is very similar to this function, except that we're going to throw an exception, you can see it says get names, it's async with an, with an asterisk. And in here, we can await on a future, for instance, but we're not going to consume its value. And then we're going to yield the value of john, let's just change this to a single code as well, because that's uh, that is encouraged to use single quotes. And then if you have another yield after this throw, you can see in here, then we get dead code because uh, Dart understands that after throwing an exception inside the stream, then another yield will not basically yield a new value. We'll never even get here. The throw exception will just stop the execution of this function and throw an exception down this stream. Okay. But how do we consume these streams? So the key to that is using the keyword await for. Okay, just like you have an array, let's say, uh, let's say list of string, and we say names. Okay, and then this could just give us some names, you would say, uh, find uh, for value in get in in names like this. Final, like this. So we say, uh, actually names, there we go. So as we have the four, there's another uh, way of uh, doing this exact uh, for, uh, how do you say loop, but for streams. And the way to do that is to say, wait for, 
okay and, and it says okay but you're awaiting for a function that doesn't return a stream so let's just change that to get numbers and you can see in here we then get number okay and then you can print it to the console if you want to so let's say print that number and we can remove this function from here as well okay so if you go to uh, our results you can see zero one two three and this will go on and on until we reach the value of nine inclusive of nine and then it will just finish there we go okay so that's that and then also you can use the same await for in order to await for the result of this get names function but since this throws an exception then you can put it inside try and catch so let's say try and then we say catch an exception here any exception and then we print that exception and then you can say await for final name in get names and then we can print that name to the console. So the result will be basically this gets numbers function first doing its work because there's one second delay between every value. So we have to wait about 10 seconds in here, actually nine seconds, because there's 10 values. And like the first one, we don't have, I think the first one we actually have to wait for as well. Yeah, so there's 10 delays. And then you can see we get the value of John because that was a string that was produced here. But right after John, we throw an exception and that that exception is caught using this try and catch. Okay, so await for is the same thing as a modern loop, like for final something in something, but you have to put the await in here to consume this, this stream. Okay, you cannot use await for on a uh, on a future await for as its name indicates it has this for in it, which is for a loop and loop is for multiple values, not just one value. Okay. Or, I mean, it can be one value, but you can't do this for futures, basically. All right, I think we're done with this example. So let's just close example four in here. And then we create example five, example five dart, our main function. And let's go and say we have example five. Okay. Oops, did I just close it? Yep, I think I close it actually. So, all right, let's go to example five. Now we're going to talk about async expand and it's a function on streams that for every value that a stream produces you can create another stream that is amazing because it is similar i think to this function then that uh, when we had a future you could produce another future inside this then function and async expand is similar to that what happened to our example five i think i just closed it async expand is similar to that simply because it allows us to get a stream and for every value that that stream produces we produce another stream so every value can then branch out into its own stream okay and this is where things get a little bit complicated because you have uh, one stream that can produce multiple values and any one of those values can then branch out into many other values okay so how do we deal with that let's let's have an ex uh, have a look at an example i'm just going to dump two functions in here okay and these don't contribute really so much to this uh, to what we're trying I mean they do contribute but I just dumped them in here because there are functions that don't contribute to us learning about async expand all right anything that has to do with us learning a new concept we're going to type by hand and anything that is just like a helper function then I, I'm just going to try to copy and paste it so let's see what happened in here we have a function called get names it's an async function with an asterisk meaning that it produces a stream and the reason we have this actually it doesn't necessarily mean it produces a stream it simply means that you can use a yield keyword within this function so if you remove this you can't use yield yield anymore even if you say this is an async function then you can use await but you can't use yield and in order to be able to use await and yield then you have to mark this as async with an asterisk okay so we have a function waits 200 milliseconds produces value of john let's just put this in single quotes and then we and it waits 200 more milliseconds and then wait and produces the value of dough okay then we have a function here that produces a stream of string what it does is that it says okay I will get every character from any given string and I will produce that character as a at its own string. So if you feed this guy with the value of hello, then what you will get is a stream. Let's see, is a stream that starts, it will wait 300 milliseconds like this, wait, and then it will produce H. Then it will wait 300 more milliseconds and it will produce E. You get the point, okay? So any string that you pr provided, it will just wait 300 milliseconds before providing the uh, one of the characters from that string until it hits the end. And you can see that we're going to basically mix uh, these two functions. So we're going to call the get characters uh, function 
uh, with the value that is produced by get names. How do we do that? Let's go in here and mark our function as async. So let's say we have get names. We call it, all right? But we want to say that every time this, this guy produces a string and it produces a string twice, one is John, the other one is Doe, we want to grab every character from that string using this get characters function, okay? And then we say async expand, all right? And then we get the event. So we say name. And then we say uh, in here, we produce get characters with that name. All right. So we say final result is, and now you can see result is a stream of string. What happens is every time this one says, so this says John, then this John will be produced here. Then will be passed to get characters. Then get characters says, okay, I'm going to wait 300 milliseconds and produce J. Okay. Then I'm going to wait 300 milliseconds and produce O and then H and then N. All right. And then when when that is done, then this guy is going to produce Do, and then Do is going to be uh, producing D O E from this function. So the result is going to be a stream that looks like this: J, and then O, a, H, N, and then D O E with uh, how much weight in between. This one produces 200 milliseconds weight before producing John completely. So 200 milliseconds uh, delay first to produce this whole thing uh, as the first string that is passed into this function. And then when we hit this function, we have 300 milliseconds before producing any of these uh, characters. So then we get uh, 300 mil delay and then 300 mil delay here and then 300, you get the idea. Uh, and then here, 300 mil delay here as well. Then uh, John before n as well and then before producing though then we get 200 milliseconds delay delay and then before producing the d we we have 300 i think you get the idea right so now that we have that how do we await for the results of this so we can say await for as we did in the previous example final character in this whole thing okay and then we can print the character to the console Let's see if we can put some commas in here to get the formatting a little bit better. And then we can look at the results and see what happens. Oops, oops. There we go. And let's run the application. You see? There we go. Right? So John, stop, and then do. Good. So async expand will basically allow you to produce a stream for a stream. Okay? Let's go to example six. We say example six in here, if I can spell it main function usually this function is an async function let's just mark it as async and then we go to our fs watch as well and we say we're running example six in here so we've seen how uh, async expand works but there is another function on streams which i think is very useful and it's called reduce and what this reduce really does it is that it gives you the current uh, and the previous values of a stream and it will allow you to do some calculations on it. So let me put a stream in here, which is uh, a very simple stream. We're just going to copy paste it because it doesn't, again, contribute to reduce. And I can see it says get all ages and it just produces 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. All right. So what you could do is to say, OK, let's say you want to sum this up. You want to sum. You want to get the sum of all these uh, ages. How do you do that? Well, we know a weight for. So let's say uh, int. Uh, sum is zero. Okay. Then we say await for final age in all ages. And then we get the, uh, get the uh, age from this function and then add it to the sum. And then we can say print sum. Okay. And then you can see the value is immediately printed to the console. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. However, you can also use a reduce function. And let's say that we have a function in here. We say int add, and it takes a and b, and it returns a plus b. Then we could go in, in here and say, well, final sum is equal to get all ages. And then you could say reduce and then you're pa you pass your function to it. You could either pass your function to it or you could say A, B and it's A plus B here as well. You could do that too, but you could also define your function separately. And this works a lot nicer in languages like Rust and Swift because you could literally say reduce and then you could say plus because plus is an operator that takes left hand side and right hand side. But Dart doesn't keep up with Swift and Rust in its cleanliness, I would say. So a uh, you can't pass a uh, you can't pass an operator like this to another function, unfortunately. 
hopefully Dart will update its syntax to be more modern, I would say. But for now, we have to define separate functions that do exactly the same thing as an operator does. So you should be able to pass it here, but you can't. All right. So let's put add in here like this. And you can then you can see the result of this is going to be a stream of actually it's a future event, right? Because reduce returns a future. OK, so uh, we can then await on it. So we say we await on the result. So we resolve it to an integer and then we can print it. So we say sum of all numbers is and then we say dollar sum. There we go. And then we get sum of all numbers is 150. OK, so reduce will resolve the current value and the uh, previous value of a stream. In this case, it will give you 10 and 20. And then you say, OK, the result is 30. Then it will take 30 and it says, okay, 30 plus 30, 60, 60 plus 40, 100, 100 plus 50, 150. Okay. So it just accumulates the values two at a time. So it says, I'll give you these two. You give me a value. Then I'll take that value and give you the next value. And then you produce a new value. I'll take the new value with the next value. You get the idea, right? Okay. That's example six. Let's go to example seven and we do the usual dance. Example seven main function usually is an async function let's do that uh, usually i mean in this particular uh, chapter example seven there we go so let's now talk about asynchronous generators and this is something that we haven't talked before actually maybe we've seen asynchronous generators before but let's have a look at a, an example let's say that we want to have a function that takes a start integer and an end integer and it will simply um it will simply go from that start to that end value and it will call a function with that value to know whether that value should be included in the resulting stream and then we're going to pass separate function pointers to that function it's a little bit abstract to explain it to like this i think it's a lot easier if you have a look at the actual implementation so let's say we have a stream and it's a, it's a stream of integer and we call it numbers okay numbers like this and we say okay and give us three named parameters in here. We say int. We say we go from start and it's default zero. Then we say int end is let's say four. Okay. And then we say, okay, we want a Boolean function in here like, like this. And we pass our value to it and it has to tell us whether it should be included or not. So we say included. Uh, and then we have a Boolean function in here. Let's put this inside is type definition. So we say type def is included is equal to this boolean function and then in here we say is included included like this and we say it's a function all right so our job is now to produce a stream let's say that we're an async function as well so that we can yield values okay and then we go through this there we go so we go from i uh, uh, sorry if we go from start and uh, less than or actually let's say less than end we don't want to include end and then we increment i and then we say uh, if function is null or uh, the func the, re the result of this function uh, is true then we yield this value all right so you have to if you don't pass a function to us we will yield this value anyways if you do pass a function to us we will call it like this all right and uh, if the ret return value of this function then is true, then we will yield. I think there is actually a better way of doing this. Maybe like this f question mark dot call, and then we say i is equal to true. I think you could do this as well, but maybe it's a little bit more abstract to do it that way. So we first can say if it's null or if we call it and it returns true, then we yield the value. Okay, so that's our numbers function. Then we can go ahead and have two functions that say uh, that they filter out even numbers and odd numbers so you can see this one produces even numbers only given an integer it will give you a, tr a true value if that number is divisible by two and the other function does the opposite by making sure that it's not divisible by two meaning that it will yield only uh, or it will return true for only um, odd numbers okay so what we're going to do is then to go ahead and say await uh, we say await for final value in numbers like this and then we'll say print print values or sorry print value so in the first example we'll just get what are we going to get zero two three and four is not included then we can go and say okay this time around we want to um, wait for let, let me just dump some coding here so we say go and call this numbers function and uh, and at 10 
start at zero by default. All right, let's put a comma in here as well. Uh, and then we say go from zero to 10 exclusive. And then as the function, get only the even numbers. Okay. And you can see then the result is going to be zero, two, four, six, eight. And if you do same, it do the same thing, but only for odd numbers, here we go like this. And we say odd numbers only like this, then we will get one, three, five, seven, and nine. Okay. So this is, this is the point of an uh, asynchronous generator, uh, that is created like this with an async and then a yield you can literally just blend in another function inside and then dependent on the result of this function then you can either yield or not yield the value okay so this was this ex example is just for demonstrating how you can use an asynchronous generator with streams and a function pointer okay so example seven is done let's go to example eight uh, dart file in here we say the main function and let's make it an async function then we change our FS watch as well to example eight. Good. So now let's talk about example eight. Um, so in, uh, we've talked about asynchronous generators using this async syntax like this, uh, and then returning a stream, but you can also use these, a, a, a keyword called yield and then sorry, yield with an asterisk. How does that work? So let me bring in two functions. And we say these two functions, one returns mail names, a stream of mail names, and it's an asynchronous generator. And you can see we're just yielding three names and then female names. How about we go ahead and create a stream now? Uh, someone tells you, okay, given these uh, male names and female names, how can you return all these values inside a new function? And you say all names, okay? So how do we do that? Then using what we've learned so far, you could say, well, this is a stream. I'm just going to say await for. So let's say await for final mail name in mail names like, like this. And then you could say um, yield. And then you can say mail name like this. But you know that in order to use these uh, values, I should say async for and loop can only be used in async function. Then you say, okay, I'm going to change this to an async function. So this is fixed now. Then you'd say, ah, oh, in order to use yield, I've, I've learned to change this into an async asterisk good so now you have that then let's just copy paste that and say female name and then we go through female names all right and then we yield that that female name like this however there is an easy way of doing that and that is if you just remove your loops like this like this remove it there as well and then just change this to yield like this and then call these functions let's say like this the function isn't defined i thought male names there we go, female names like this. Did we say female name in the previous example? Let's see what, what I did. Male names, female names, female name. Okay, this is fine. So you can then use the yield asterisk function in order to create, so this is your stream. So what it does, what Dart does, it says, okay, you're creating a stream. I start from here. Then I will go and say, put John in here, John, and then Peter, and then Paul, and Mary, Jane, and Sue like this. Okay. So this is, this will be the result of this stream. It will literally take the first streams result and places it in your stream and then the next stream in that order. Okay. So that's how yield when an asterisk works. Let's go to example nine, example nine dot dart in here. We create a main function and then we're going to talk about stream controllers and stream controllers. Um, I mean, if you've seen now streams and you, you have seen streams, you can see that the function, uh, the functionality to create or the code to create streams is a little bit abstract in that you have to think about something that f maybe starts in the, in the future, produces some values or exceptions and then ends in the future. So it's a little bit like an abstract thing actually to talk about. However, stream controllers make the creation of streams a little bit less abstract in that it, they wrap them inside an object that you can control in real life uh, or in real time rather. So let's say we create a controller. We say controller is a stream controller controller, and it's going to be auto imported, I think from Dart async. So make sure that if your editor is not auto importing this, that you import it yourself, Dart async. And then we say, okay, we're a stream controller of string. Okay. And then we say controller dot sync dot add, and we say, hello. 
and this sink is where you literally sink your values in it you literally put your values inside the sink okay just imagine a sink where you wash your hands that kind of sink you put your values in there okay hello world and then you can treat this controller as a stream so you say await for final name or value in stream sorry a controller then you have a stream in it then you can print that value and then at the end you say controller dot close all right like this and if you look at the results then you get uh hopefully hello world i'm not sure oh by the way in the previous example now that i'm thinking about it example eight i think we didn't actually consume these values so let's just say consume these because i can see no values being printed because we're still on example eight let's say await for final name in all names and then we print those names there we go and then we can close example eight okay and then let's change our fs watch as well to execute example nine like this and we go and you can see hello world is being printed to the console okay so that's how you can use a stream controller i mean there's other examples of using stream controllers of course but this is just like the simplest example i can show you so a stream controller is that is a, an object that you can add values to and you can also read values from so it acts in two different ways it's like read and write whereas a stream is a read only a stream controller is read and write okay so example nine done let's create example 10 in here and then we say we have a main function that is probably an async function and then we change this to example 10 in fs watch as well and then we close our uh, terminal for now okay now let's talk a little bit about stream transformers now a stream transformer is a, some sort of a class that takes one stream and it changes it to another stream okay so let me just show you an example let's have a function that produces a list of names okay and this is something that we haven't seen before this particular way of creating a stream and you can see you can create a stream from an iterable and you pass it an iterable and every element inside that iterable will then will then be placed inside your stream okay so in order to consume the stream and let let's say someone tells you consume every value in the stream and convert it to an uppercase value okay uppercase value then you say okay i've learned that say for await for final and uh, name in names and then you say uh, print name print name dot uppercase okay so this is one way of doing it and then you can see all those names will be printed to the console in uppercase but there's another way you could say take names and then map every value and say event to uppercase okay and you could just change this to the value of name as well so this is another way of doing it and then you can then consume name and you can see it prints the exact same thing so it converts every value to uppercase okay however if this is something you're doing a lot in your program in your application you don't want to map your streams every time you want to convert them to an uppercase uh, stream with values uh, as uppercase so you could create a um, you could create something called a stream transformer as its name indicates it takes the stream and transforms it to perhaps another value of the same type or another value of a different type so in order to do that let's say that we want to create a stream transformer that takes a stream of string and converts every element to an uppercase value okay so let's say that we create we call a class we call it to uppercase and we extend stream transformer base okay this guy takes two values an input and an output since we are going to work on an inputs of string and output of string then we're just going to say we're transforming a, a stream that is a string and then you have to implement this bind function in here okay and you can see you get a stream of string because in here we said stream of string or at least we said string and it understands the input is a stream of string and then it understands that here we also said string meaning that the output also has to be a string okay so you have to implement this bind function and you get a stream as its input and you have to produce an output and you can see we're taking the input and then we're doing the exact same functionality using map which we did up here but we're just returning that new uh, stream from this function so now you have a stream transformer that you can go ahead and use so this is getting a little bit more advanced i completely understand this but we also have some advanced people watching these videos so we have to ensure that we're catering to both beginners or actually to beginners intermediate and advanced uh, people watching videos so uh, then we can combine this concept with extensions and there is a separate chapter of the dart crash course uh, dedicated to extensions so if you haven't watched that please go ahead and do that now because it's going to be very useful for you 
let's say we create an extension and we say we're creating our extension on streams of string. And let's say that in here, we want to create a, a getter and we call it uh, capitalized. Let's say we return a stream of string and we call it uh, get capitalized. And what this guy returns is that it calls at uh, this, which is a stream, and it says transform it using which transformer or instance of this guy. Boom, like that. And since this is not a necessary keyword, we can just remove it and the result will just look like this. OK, and you can do the same thing. You can create another getter in here that doesn't even use a transformer instead just uses map directly. So let's say string of string in here and we say get capitalized using map and then we just use map directly in here. OK, boom, boom. Let's see. We have one missing uh, parenthesis somewhere here. OK, so you can see this one uses a transformer. This one just uses map directly. So we can go and consume these values. So I'm just going to take some code and copy and paste some code and dump it up here like this, like this. So in the first example, we're going through names and uh, actually, let's see. Yeah, this is a getter or it's a variable. It's not a function. OK, so then we're saying that capitalized. You can see it returns a stream of string and the next one just capitalized using map and both are going to return the same values. So there we go. Let me clear the console set. Uh, Kathy and or Kathy and Lars and the same thing is going to be printed to the console I have a little bit of difficulty with saying Lars because I think it's a German name Lars 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 I don't know Lars something between S and uh, Z maybe okay but that's not the point of this example <laughs> so you can see how we're using uh, stream transformers in this uh, example 10 let's move to example 11 then Oops, there we go. This is, this is something that happens uh, that happens to me every chapter or not. It doesn't happen to me. I do it every chapter. Pretty much. I minimize. Uh, I do command M for minimizing instead of command N for creating a new file. Example 11 dart. OK. And a main function, which is probably going to be an async function as well. And let's go and do our FS watch correctly in here like this. OK, so what we're going to do in this example is going to create a, a future or actually, yeah, a future out of a stream using a function on streams called to list. So I'm going to bring a stream in here and you can see it's called get names and just has three values within that stream. So if we go and if you want to basically grab all these names, but as a list. All right. How do we do that? How do we say get the list of all these values? Well, if you have a look at get names and call it and then get the stream out of this, there is a function on this called to list. You can see that it then returns a future of the list of strings. In order to consume that feature, you can say await on it. So you can say final all names, then you will get a list of string in here. OK, then you can print that. You can say print all names like this, and then you get the result printed to the console. So you can then say for final name in all names like this and you can say print name or you could have uh, in uh, in I mean if we didn't talk about two lists you could have said await for get names and then you print the names okay but I just wanted to show you how two list works as well remember two list this function when you await on it it you have you're basically waiting for this entire stream to finish Okay, remember that. So if the stream takes 20 seconds to complete, your code in the main function is going to wait 20 seconds before it, it, it before it proceeds to line number three. Okay, so to list waits for this entire function to produce its entire stream. Okay, example 11 done. And uh, let's create example 12 like this. Okay. And then we're going to go and, and actually example 12 is a little bit longer than other examples. So let's grab a cup of tea or coffee before continuing perhaps. So async function and then we go and FS watch example 12 as well. In this example, we're going to handle errors in our streams. So let's just create a simple stream and uh, we're going to call it get names and you can see it produces John Jane and then all out of names. It just throws a string. OK, so in this example, I'm going to show you three different ways of handling errors inside a stream. So uh, one way is using handle error function, a function on stream. So if you call a function uh, like this that produces streams and then you can say handle error. 
Okay, the result of handle error is a new stream that basically will allow you to handle errors in the original stream, which is this get names function, for instance. So let's create an extension. So we're going to go here and we say we have an extension uh, t on stream of t of any stream, basically. And let's just call this extension perhaps absorb errors like, like this. And then we have a function in here that returns the same exact stream. And then we say it's called absorb errors using handle error. And then this function, what it does is internally calls handle error, as you can see in here, and it completely ignores the error and the stack trace like this, and it just doesn't do anything. Okay, like this. And we can do it like that. So it's actually, no, let's put the comma in there. So then what we'll do, we'll go inside our main function, and then we'll start using that uh, absorb errors. Uh, using error handler. So I'm going to dump some code in here. You can see we're awaiting for name in get names. And then we say dot absorb errors using error handle, uh, sorry, using handle error. And then you can see the result. We'll get John Jane, and then the error is nowhere to be found. So the error was completely absorbed using handle error. Okay. There's another way of doing exactly the same thing is using error handlers. So let's create another uh, getter in here or another function. We say string T and we say absorb errors using handlers like this. And the result of this is going to be that we are going to transform the current stream. We're saying transform, transform, but we don't have to create a new transformer class. And in here, we just say we create a stream, uh, oops, transformer, transformer. It's, it's a mouthful. Uh, and then we say we create a stream transformer from handlers. Did I create it? The stream transformer. And we say uh, from handlers. Okay. And from handlers, we say in here, we have a function call, sorry, a parameter handle error like this. And this guy just uh, takes some parameters in here. And, and I think the last parameter is sync. And in here, we just say, well, a sync dot close like this. So this is the action we're taking upon um, this uh, stream airing out. So you can create a stream transformer and pass it to a transform function in order to absorb your errors as well. So then we can go ahead and uh, consume the result of this uh, stream as well, like this. You can see John Jane and John Jane again printed to the console. So these both functions are behaving exactly similar to each other. Then I'll show you another example of, of absorbing errors inside a stream, and that is using an actual transformer. Okay, so we say we create a stream error absorber and it extends stream transformer and let's say this is a generic class of t and it takes t and returns t so any stream will be returned exactly as it is okay then we'll override our bind function in here okay then what you can do is just to uh this is one way of doing it of course but i'm going to show you another way let's go in here in the bind function then we say we create a controller controller is a stream controller of the exact same type that we're consuming and returning. We return our controllers stream, okay, because the result should be a stream. Then we say in here, stream, listen. So start consuming the values of that stream like this. And we say, okay, upon getting new values, you see it says on data is the first parameter. Then we say controller dot sync dot add call this function. So literally add, take that value that is coming inside the stream and add it to the sync of our controller. Then when an error happens, just ignore that error like this. And then when we're done consuming this stream, then say controller dot close, call that close function. All right, like this. So this is the third way. Let's see what it's saying. It's saying missing concrete implementation of stream transfer cast. Try implementing tr stream transformer, stream absorber. Uh, I don't think actually transformer. Oh, we said transform. We should say transformer base. Okay. Now that we have this transformer, let's go ahead and create a, um, inside our extension, a usage for it. Like here, you can see, there we go like this. So you can see we have a stream of T absorb errors using transformer and it transforms the current stream using our instance of stream error absorber transformer in here. Okay. Then we can go ahead and call that function. So let's go ahead and call it like this. Absorb errors using transformer. And you can see the result is exactly the same. So it says John Jane, John Jane, John Jane. Okay, so three ways to absorb errors inside a stream.
Okay, done with example 12. Let's create example 13. Example 13.dart main function. Let's turn it into an async function usually and then change our FS watch as well to say example 13 and then we can get rid of our terminal as well. Okay. Now in this example, we're going to have a look at stream at transforming it using async map. And also we're going to use the fold function on the result of that async map. So what async map on a stream allows you to do is to transform every element of a stream into its own future. Okay, so let's say for every element produced by a stream, you want to do some work that uh, may be taking some time. Okay, so such as uh, calling an API, for instance. Okay, so let me produce a stream in here and place it right here. Okay, and then we'll have a, a function, a helper function that we'll just dump here. You can see it's called a future that returns a list of string and it's called ec uh, extract characters. Okay, then it will create a, a list of strings. So a string for every character within the string. It waits 100 milliseconds before producing a new value. And then it goes to the result of uh, this function and then adds every character to it. So if I pass John to this function, the return will be a future that has the value of J, then O, H, N, like this. Okay, so this is actually a really good example. I get how Copilot could understand that. Okay. So this is what this function produces, a future of a list of strings. So it produces this, if you pass John, produces this, if you pass Jane, and this, if you pass Jill. All right. So now that we have these two helper functions, we can go ahead and have a look at our actual example. So what I'm going to do is to say final, uh, actually not final, uh, let's just start with get names. And this get names, uh, you can see it is a stream of string. Let's say for every string that this produces, we want to call this function and grab its value. Okay. So then you could say dot async map, and you can see it says you return a future within this. And then we say, okay, we get the name. And then for that, we call extract characters of that name. And then if you put this inside a, a value, let's say result, then you can see your result is a stream of a list of string. Okay. Because for every value, of a string that this produces, then you producing a list of string. So, uh, and a list of, sorry, a stream of string will be a stream of lists of string. Okay. And then uh, now that we have that, we can go ahead and say, okay, then we want to fold this uh, stream. And then we say, okay, we give you an initial value of an empty string like this. And then you give us this, um, uh, the previous value which is the previous value is going to be our string for us. And this element, uh, you can see is going to be list of string. Then we're going to say, okay, then we take the previous value and then we perhaps actually we could create a function in here. Let's just create a function. Then we say the element, we will join it. So the list of string, we will join it using a, a space. So we say final elements, and then we return the previous value and the elements like this and a space at the end. All right. So our result then, uh, let's see, it will be a future of string and then we can await on it and it will be a string. Then we can print it to the console. So print result. All right. So let's see what the result's going to look like. John, Jane, and Jill. There we go. Right. So that's, that's how basically async, async map and fold work. So fold will allow you to, it's kind of like it, one other example that we saw before, it's kind of like reducing kind of, okay. So it takes a previous value with an initial value and the new value, and then you do some functionality and you return a value and the stream will then be the stream of that return that you're uh, returning from this function. So that's example 13. Let's go to example 14 dart and then the main function and async like this. And let's just change our FS watch to example 14 as well. Now, in example 14, we're going to have a look at um, another example of async map. All right. Um, so we're going to async map, uh, which converts every element of our stream to a stream of itself. All right. And we've already seen this async map uh, before, but I just wanted to show you another example of how to use it. So let's have another stream in here and we call it gets names. Then what we're going to do is to uh, for uh, create a function that takes a string value and then it will repeat it three times. So we say we say a stream of string and we say uh, times three and it's a string value. 
and then we say uh, stream from iTurbo, okay, like this. Uh, let's bring it to the next line. And in this iTurbo, we say iTurbo generate three times uh, this particular value, like this. I think we can do like this. Boom, boom. All right. So now we have a string that, uh, sorry, a string that repeats the given value three times like that. So what we could do is to go in the main function and we say that we say get names and then we say async expand. And then for every name that we get in here, we call times three, uh, times three that name. All right. And then we say final uh, names three times. All right, so what do you think the result of this is gonna be? I mean, if you had a look at this example, it just like that without resolving the type of names time three, a time, sorry, names three times variable. So let's have a look. It is the result of calling this async function, uh, sorry, the stream function, get names. And for every name, it is producing a, another stream, which is a stream of string. So if every string is becoming its own stream, of strings, then the result of this should be a, str a stream of strings. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see it's a stream of strings. Okay. Then you can say await for final name in names three times, and then you print those names. So let's have a look. There, we can see Bob three times, Alice three times, and then Joe three times. Okay. So this is another example of using async expand. Done with example 14, let's create example 15 in here. Main function, make it async, oops, async. And then we go into our FS watch, example 15, like that. And then we're gonna, in this example, talk about broadcast streams. And this is something we haven't done before, okay? And um, I'll just quickly explain what broadcast streams are. A stream is a, it's an object that can be listened to uh, from one listener at a time. Okay, so if you have a stream, a variable, a stream, and then you start uh, going through that stream using an await for uh, a function or sorry, an await for keyword combination, then you can only do it once. Once you consume that stream, you can't do it. You can't do it again. Okay, and it actually depends. I can't really say that you can't do it. It depends where that stream comes from. And that's where the source of the stream then divides into two types. One is a broadcast stream and another one is a non-broadcast stream. Okay. A broadcast stream is a kind of stream that multiple listeners can listen and consume at the same time. Whereas a non-broadcast stream is a stream that only one listener can listen at a time. All right. So let's go ahead and start talking about um, this using stream controllers. So I'm going to create a function in here and I'm going to call it non broadcast stream example. I'm just going to dump it in here because it's something, something we've done before. And you can see it just creates a stream controller of string and then starts adding values to it. Okay. And within this function, you can see, I mean, we don't actually return a stream as you can see in here. Okay. But within this function, we're saying try and catch. And then we're saying await for final name in controller. And then we're doing another await for name in controller. So while we're listening for this controller as a stream, we're listening again for every element. Okay, so it's like a, a loop within a loop. And since this stream controller is not a broadcast stream controller, as we've seen, a non-broadcast stream generally cannot be listened to by more than one listener at a time. However, we're breaking that we're breaking that rule in here. So we're listening to the stream and for every element that the stream is producing, we're listening to it again. So this should ideally not work, right? So let's go up here and test this out. And let's say await non broadcast stream example. And then you can see in here when we run it, as soon as we get the first element in here, here, we print that element. And then as soon as we start listening to that stream one more, once more is this bad state stream has already been listened to. All right. So to change this, what we could do is to go ahead and copy this code that we've written in here like this. Oops. <laughs> like this. And then I'll paste it in here. And then let's just change this. So we say late final controller and say this is a stream controller, uh, controller of string like this. OK. And then in here, we could say controller is a stream controller uh, of string. 
and then we say it's a broadcast stream controller as you can see in here okay and let's just change the name to broadcast stream example and now that you have a broadcast uh, uh, controller what we're going to do is to say okay we create subscriptions to it uh, let's actually we, we need to change quite a lot of code from here so i'm just going to remove all of that so we have a stream controller that's a broadcast stream controller and then we say uh, final sub one which is subscription and we say controller dot stream dot listen all right and we say subscription one got the a new name and we create another subscription in here like this sub two and then we change this print statement to sub two as well then we go and grab these controller sync add uh, lines of code and then we say controller dot close like this all right then we say controller uh, on cancel when, when this controller is canceled then we also need to get rid of our subscriptions so we say sub one dot cancel like this and then we say uh, sub two dot cancel and we just print we say on cancel something like this all right so let's then call this function from here. We say await broadcast stream example, uh, like <laughs> broadcast stream example, oopsie daisy, like da so many keys being printed. Sorry, so many keys are being uh, pressed in here. So let's have a look at what happens. So the first one, uh, which is a non-broadcast stream example, just errors out. And the second one just says the subscription one got the name of Bob so we did subscription two then we got alice and then joe and then got canceled that's it so you can see in this example we had basically a stream controller that could be listened to its stream could be listened to more than once and that is thanks to creating a broadcast stream controller okay so this is how you can create a broadcast stream controller in this example let's go to the final example of this chapter which is example 16 and create a main function with an async uh, suffix and then we say watch example 16 as well like this and then in this example uh, we're gonna have a look at a, a something that i use usually in projects and uh, actually not usually in some in some projects i've used this extension uh, or this functionality and it is a little bit advanced i would say so don't get scared but what this example does is that let's say that you have a stream uh, that produces some values let's say a stream that for instance produces names okay but this stream produces one name and then waits a number of seconds and then produces another name waits uh, another number of seconds and or maybe milliseconds but what you want from the any stream that you produce for instance in this example is to for them to produce one value at least at least one value per for instance one second however if they go over one second before producing the next value then you want to kind of say timeout okay so you want a stream that is timely it works in a timely fashion you want to say you have to produce one value every x number of seconds for instance okay and this is what we're gonna achieve with with this example so let's create some sort of a stream transformer that errors out if the given stream if the input stream doesn't produce a value within a given number of seconds okay so let's go in here and i think we've already fixed fs watch uh have we yep all right so let's go and create a stream transformer let's say we call it uh maybe timeout between events or something like that class timeout between events and a stream transformer that works on a, an element of any type in here and we say extend stream transformer base of inputs of an output of the same type okay then what we need to do is to create the bind function oops a stream transformer base i think we, we need to import dart async and then we say bind in here okay so we take a stream of e and then we produce a stream of e as well in here so we need a few um we need a few variables in here so let's create a first sorry first create a stream controller of that same stream type and we say this is uh, optional and then we say we also have a stream subscription and then we create that stream subscription so let's say stream subscription okay it's optional as well and then we create a little timer and we say timer as well okay and you see a lot of you have asked me which extension in visual studio code allows you to see all these warnings uh, right in line and this is called error lens 
it's an extension call, called Airlens. I mean, it's great unless you get to these functions where you haven't really done the scaffolding of your function completely and then you get errors everywhere. Like they're so, so invasive. They're like in your face. So I think in these cases, Airlens isn't really helping so much. It's just making me very stressed. Okay. So let's create our controller. So we say our controller is actually equal to a stream controller. Okay and then a uh, stream controller in its constructor you have a few parameters that you can pass one is on listen okay and we say on listen is a function in here like this uh, and then we have another parameter in here expected to find really on listen oops on listen let's just remove that and uh, then we also have on cancel so we say on cancel when we cancel this uh, controller let's cancel the subscription and the timer all right, so we have that in place. Then we can go ahead and say, just return the controller's uh, stream, controller.stream like this. All right. Okay, so we have the scaffolding in place. So what do we do on listen? So let's on listen, actually start listening to the input stream. So we say in here, we say subscription is equal to the stream, start listening to it like this. And then we get data here data like that uh, okay and then within this let's see if i can put a comma all right so now every time we get data we need to cancel our timer because this timer is kind of like the expiration timer so every time we get data we kick start it again okay because then it waits x number of seconds before the next item is produced and then it will time out okay then we say okay when we get data just cancel the timer because we know that uh, yeah Basically, we got data, we shouldn't time out. Then we say, okay, as soon as we do this, we create a new timer. Uh, and let's say timer dot periodic, like, like here. And we say the duration is a, uh, is a value that someone has to pass to us. So let's say in here, we say final duration is a duration, like a parameter. And we create a constructor in here and we say it's a cons constructor. And we make this a required named parameter like this. So now that we have the duration, we can use it in here. Let's say the duration like that, like this. Okay. So when we get that uh, timer, when we create the timer in here, we could say timer at, as soon as that is kicked, when the timer basically kicks a new event, we want to throw an exception. So let's go ahead and define that exception in here. Okay. I'm going to dump some values uh, in here. So an exception timeout between events exception then as soon as the timer it kicks a value then let's just say uh, we want to add that uh, exception to our controller so we say controller dot add error okay and in this add error we just say uh, oopsie daisy like this we say timeout between events exception and then we just say timeout like this boom all right and then after we have that uh, we have the subscription on lesson we also have to add uh, other, actually, wait a minute. Uh, this is when the timer kicks and it ends in here. Then right after this, we need to also ensure that our controller gets the data. So we say controller uh, dot add data. Okay, so we add the data, but we also set up a new timer to kick off after duration. And then if that timer kicks a new value in, then we will get an exception in our stream. Okay, so we have on listen, on listen, let's also implement on cancel uh, on don't we have on cancel after on listen, let's see where on listen ends, I think it's here. And then we say on error, what else do we have uh, on error, cancel on error, we have quite a lot of these values, seems like it. Uh, but I believe we also have to have on cancel. Uh, let me see on cancel like this. And the name parameter on cancel isn't defined. Try correcting the name. So let me just remove this and see what is happening. So we have a stream controller and we have on listen. Let's go in here uh, on resume. And I can see we have on cancel in here for sure. Uh, but maybe I'm just, oh, here we've already implemented on cancel. I was just implementing at the wrong place, but I think we have on cancel already. Okay. So that is already set up now. So uh, now that we have our let me actually make sure that we've done it correctly. Subscription timer. Yeah, seems fine. So what we need to do then is to go ahead uh, and implement the other parameters to this function. You can see here we have a 
controller, stream controller, and then subscription stream dot listen. And then we have the data coming in here. Okay. But we also have other parameters, I believe, uh, which all, which should be implemented in here. And this is for instance, on air, uh, like this. And we say, if you get an error, then call the uh, controller add error like that. And also we have on done and we should say controller dot close like this. And again, if this is all making your head spin, that's, that's fine. I mean, it, it, that's, that's what writing a little bit more advanced code is like sometimes. Uh, it is a little bit more difficult to grasp the concepts, but I think you need to go through the code yourself. It's not so much code. It's just, a lot. I mean, if you, if you imagine uh, if you had zoom level, if I went in here and said zoom level one, which is the default one, this code is very little. It's just this. Okay, so it's, it shouldn't be that scary to look at. And there's lots of commas in here. I mean, if you remove the commas, the code will be even shorter. Okay, so just because it looks big, it doesn't necessarily mean it is too complicated. So don't worry about it. If, if you don't understand it right now, just know that we have a timer. That's the core of this functionality, the timer that kicks in every time, uh, or, or we create a timer every time we get data. Okay, so when we get data, we create a timer that kicks, uh, basically it starts the timer or it doesn't start actually, it it uh, elapses, that timer elapses after this duration every time we produce data. Meaning that, let's say that you have a value uh, produced here and the duration that we provide to this uh, um, class is one second, but your stream waits two seconds, okay? Then your timer is gonna kick here, right here. It's gonna be the timer, it's like, oops, one second elapsed, but you're waiting two seconds. And when that happens, then we're going to throw an exception right in the controller, meaning that the entire stream is going to stop. Okay. So then it's going to be canceled and your subscription gets canceled and your timer gets canceled and your entire stream is going to throw an error. Okay. So if you look at the code, it's very simple. The entire core of it is this timer. Okay. So let's create a, a little extension on stream and uh, which can use our, uh, transformer. So I'm going to place it here. Uh, boom, boom. And you can see it's an extension on stream and you can remove this name if you don't want it. Oops, actually it says the declaration with isn't reference. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so we have this extension, which you can see is transforming the given stream and is using our transformer with a given duration. Let's put some commas in here to get the formatting a little bit better. Then we can go inside our main function and I'm going to dump some code in here as well, like this. All right. And we have get names. I think we actually didn't implement the get names uh, function. I'm going to dump some code in here for get names as well. And you can see it's an async function that returns a stream, John, Jane, Doe. All right. And it produces John and it waits one second and then produces Jane. Uh, but then it waits 10 seconds before produces, producing Doe. And what we want is to go ahead in here and you can see we're saying get names, but put a timeout of three seconds. So if it, if this stream waits three seconds between producing its next element, then we want to get an exception and then we'll get this exception in here. So if you run our application, you can say it says John, Jane, and then as soon as three seconds pass, then we get an exception in here. Okay. This is, there's a timeout. So this is this example and was the last example in this chapter. I hope that I wasn't ranting too much. I really did try to speak as fast as possible without making it, uh, um, too difficult to understand. Uh, so, uh, but I completely am aware of that. This chapter is a lot more advanced than other chapters, but this is the nature of asynchronous programming for me, it becomes, it has become second nature, but I completely understand also for some people, it could be difficult to grasp. If you have any questions about this chapter, for instance, particularly just join the discord server, the link to which is in the description of this video is also in the description of the dart crash course playlist. So join the Discord server and ask your questions there if uh, I or someone else in the Discord server can be of help. I hope you enjoyed this chapter and see you in the next one.